The new Asus ROG Maximum Z890 Hero Board is here with full support for Intel's new Core Ultra 200 series CPUs. Packed with advanced features for AR tools and Intel's new CU DIMM tech, the board promises a beefy upgrade, especially considering that Intel's new chips require a new socket, so there's no way to get a new chip and keep the old board, or keep the old board and get a new chip. While always getting a new board for a new Intel CPU is a pain and a costly experience, the Asus ROG Maximus Z890 Hero does come with some notable upgrades that perhaps make this investment a bit more worth it. Its 24 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 power stages are a welcome addition, and the CU DIMM RAM support makes the board compatible for faster RAM kits expected in the future. Asus has also carried over its Nitro Path DRAM design from its X870e board, so this board promises the same RAM enhancements thanks to the shorter pins that make more contact with the RAM sticks. Then there's also Thunderbolt 5 which is a next gen port that supports up to 80 gigabits per second of bi-directional bandwidth, which can be boosted up to 120 gigabits per second for displays using bandwidth boost. Of course, there's also Wi-Fi 7 for all those four people watching who have compatible modems and fast enough network speeds to warrant the feature. Before I get into the exact ports and headers on this board, let's first unbox it. Asus sent over the ROG Maximus Z890 Hero in a cool media kit alongside the ROG Ryujin 3 Extreme. The motherboard box includes the board, a bottle cap opener and a load of extras. The extras include connectors, wires, headers, cables, the Wi-Fi 7 antenna and some paperwork. The ASUS ROG Ryujin 3 Extreme was also included in this kit. This is a new all-in-one cooler that is designed specifically to combat the heat zones on the new Intel Core Ultra processor. I'm not going to get into too much detail on this cooler, but it does come with the new Asetek Emma Gen 8 V2 pump with improved cooling and voltage regulation. The cooler also includes the now common ARGB fans that are magnetically connected to one another for a cleaner setup. The display on the cooler has also been improved. It now includes a 3.5 inch 640 by 480 LCD panel, an improvement over the non-extreme 240p display. The Intel Core Ultra 9 chip, for those who care about what it looks like, still comes in its rectangular shape. The chip now requires an LGA1851 processor socket, which is found on newer motherboards such as this one. While the socket size is essentially the same at 37.5mm by 45mm, there are 151 new pins on this board and repositioned plastic notches on the chip which prevent you from putting in the wrong chips in the wrong place. The issue with these new Intel chips being the same size as the last ones is that they are likely prone to warp. This is an issue in past generation 1700 chips. Due to how the clamp closed down on the chip and applied pressure on both sides, they would warp over time. Intel says that the new improved socket, called the Reduced Load ILM, will help with that issue. Essentially, the company has added a washer underneath the hinge of the clamp. So when you close down the CPU, it isn't as tight as before. This means less pressure on the chips and hopefully it won't warp. It isn't the best solution in the world to fix the issue. Surely Intel could have added more pressure points to the top and the bottom of the clamp to spread out the load. Maybe they'll do that in the next generation. We'll have to see. You also won't be able to use your existing contact frames on the board because there's a slight change to the CPU bracket. The holes around the sides have been moved up and there's a notch in the way, but I'm sure you'll be able to pick up a new LGA1851 contact frame somewhere down the line. The new socket might not support existing contact frames, but most coolers should mount onto the boards without a hassle. You'll just use the LGA1700 brackets to install your cooler. The new Intel Core chip comes with 20 PCIe 5.0 lanes, 16 are used for the GPU and 4 are used for the Gen 5 SSD. This is a first for Intel. Up to now, Intel chips force GPUs into the X8 mode when using a PCIe 5.0 M.2 slot. Thankfully, there are now enough lanes here to use both your GPU and SSD. From a spec point of view, the ROG Maximus Z890 Hero supports up to 192GB of DDR5 RAM. There's one PCIe 5x16 slot, one PCIe 4x1 slot, and one PCIe 4x16 slot. There's six M.2 slots on this board, six of them. One of them is a 22110 PCIe 5 slot. There are two 2280 PCIe slots and three 2280 PCIe 4 slots. 
the One M.2 slot is accessed easily by using the M.2 Q release to quickly remove the large heatsink, install your SSD and put the heatsink back. There's also a large heatsink over the chipset and around the CPU socket VRM section. The board includes 5 thermal sensors, 4 fan headers and 1 all-in-one pump header. There's also an extra 8-pin PCIe power connector on the inside of the board alongside the usual 24-pin connector and double 8-pin CPU connectors. This new 8-pin connector has been added due to the new lanes on the board and how the VRM has been designed. The back I.O. then includes 11 ports in total. There are 2 Thunderbolt 5 ports, 5 USB 10 GB per second ports, 4 being Type-A and 1 is USB-C. There's also an additional 5 USB Type-A 5 GB ports. You'll also find an HDMI port, Wi-Fi connector, 2.5 GB and 5 GB Ethernet ports, 2 audio jacks, optical SPDIF out ports, BIOS flashback button and a CMOS button. I do need to mention the board's design because it is quite cool looking. It does bear a similar style to the AMD counterpart. There's a 3D ROGI on the M.2 heatsink and the IO includes an awesome ROG graphic that is customizable in Armory Crate. The board is also completely black which is what you would expect from ASUS. Setting up the board was quite simple. I did use the bench to test the board, so it doesn't look as fancy as it would in a case, but this is so much easier considering I have to take everything apart, box it up and send everything back to ASUS. I connected the Ryujin 3 Extreme fans to the radiator, installed the LG A1700 mount onto the board, applied the ASUS ROG thermal paste and mounted the pump. I then installed the SSD and booted up the PC. There was a BIOS update available, so I made sure to update that before I jumped into Windows. I then used the ASUS drivers update utility to install all the drivers and updates for the components. There are some important tools ASUS has included in this board to get the most out of your hardware. The new AEMP3 tech comes with Intel CUDIMP support. This tech isn't really new, but the third generation now supports this new RAM. I did have a set of Kingston Renegade DDR5 CU DIMM sticks with me that ASUS sent over. Each stick was 24GB so in total I had 48GB of RAM. DIMM fit is also another feature that you can use. This setting sees the board perform an algorithm on the memory and register the sub timings and optimize stability for each RAM kit. This setting is for those who really want to overclock their kits. Scanning and running these tests can take up to 7 hours but they do provide increased speeds. Apart from this, the BIOS has enough on offer to make all those PC enthusiasts happy. For this review, I tested out the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. I also put the CU DIMM RAM to the test. I also ran some AR tests because this new Intel chip comes with NPUs that are important for that stuff. If you care about AI, of course. I also ran some of these tests with the ASUS AR overclocking tools enabled. This is the most basic and accessible overclocking tool on this board. Along with the AI Advanced OC profile, I also removed all limits on the CPU, added a level 3 NPU boost and selected XMP tweaked level 3. Power use during these untweaked benchmarks reached 243 watts during CPU Z stress test but idled at 227 watts. Max temperature peaked at 79 degrees Celsius and idled at 77 degrees Celsius on the CPU sensor with a 55 degrees Celsius reading on the VRM. The board remained fairly cool at 30 8 degrees Celsius. Efficiency cores maxed out at 5.7 GHz but dropped down to 4.8 GHz and added around that mark when temperatures peaked over 75 degrees Celsius. 4.8 GHz seems to be the safe spot for thermals and out of the box performance. After I enabled overclocking and removed the power limits, the CPU power increased slightly to 245 watts where it idled. I ran CPU Z stress test again for 10 minutes. Power remained at 245 watts. Core frequency saw a 100 MHz boost to 4.9 GHz. Temperatures on the CPU then reached 79 degrees Celsius and the VRM was at 55 degrees Celsius. The board still remained fairly cool at 38 degrees Celsius, so there wasn't a drastic change here even with the extra 20 watts of power. Scores also didn't drastically increase that much. Sure there was a clear jump but you can likely squeeze more out of this board and the chip. The big jump in scores came after I enabled Intel Extreme Tuning. I just set this to automatic. I have listed these as tuned on the graphs. 
As a result, the core frequency increased to 4,966 MHz, power consumption idled at 270 watts, and the CPU temperature peaked at 81 degrees Celsius. This idled at 79 degrees Celsius during a 10 minute stress test. The VRM then reached 54 degrees Celsius and stayed there. The board temperature hit 39 degrees Celsius. These overclock scores show you just how much power the Intel Core Ultra 2 series chips pack. These were also slight tweaks on the core clocks too. The result was a power hungry CPU that got incredibly hot. Testing out the RAM was also interesting. The new 8800 mega transfers per second RAM lives up to its speed. Once I enabled Expo mode in the BIOS, I was able to reach a full 4400 megahertz on the RAM sticks, which is the full 8800 mega transfers per second. Of course, this new RAM offers a lot more room for overclocking and performance tweaks too. There are also larger and faster sticks in the works which will be available next year. Overall, my experience with the ROG Maximus Z890 Hero was as I expected, fairly decent. The board handles its thermals well and comes with a plethora of settings that you can dive into to tweak your build. If you ask me, the sheer amount of tweaks on offer here is a little overwhelming, which definitely makes this board for the real enthusiasts. The Intel Core Ultra 9 285K is also a beast when it comes to its performance. These numbers are simply the start of the experience that this chip will offer. Windows has also yet to optimize speed and performance, so give it time and you'll get even more from this tech. You do need to keep in mind that this is a power hungry CPU that gets very hot. I personally believe that it might be overkill for the majority of the users out there. I am a gamer and I would likely stick to AMD for my PC build. The cost of electricity and the thermals Intel is asking for puts me off using this product. It is cool, don't get me wrong, but you'll need to go into this chip knowing what you're getting and not buy this simply because it can perform on these levels. You need to ask yourself if you need these levels. The same goes for the CU DIMM RAM. These speeds are next level impressive. Faster and larger sticks are also on the way, which most people probably don't need. It is great to have all this tech, but if you're spending money on performance that isn't making your life easier, then you're just throwing money away. In my opinion anyway. So those are my thoughts on the ROG Maximus Z890 Hero and the new Intel Core Ultra 285K. Are you looking to pick these products up? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll also leave links in the description where you can find out more about both products. While you're here, also be sure to check out the other Intel board reviews I have up on the channel today. There's also a bunch of AMD board reviews which I'll link down below. Until next time, farewell.